All right, it's time to bring out our fourth company. That company is Seen It. Presenting for Seen It is CEO Emily Forbes. Oh, hi. I'm a film producer, and I went to go and film a documentary, and I went to go and film a huge protest that was happening. But as soon as I got to the crowd, everyone was already capturing on cameras, phones. Their footage was so real, it was so personal, it was kind of a bit gritty. So why was I trying to compete? And why was I spending any time filming people filming? So I put my cameras away, I ran around the crowd, and I asked for the video. I've got the clicker. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Today, video is the fastest growing format, with over 500 million people tuning into Facebook alone to watch video. So video consumption's going through the roof, but also people are getting savvier to create their own video. The video landscape is divided. On one side, we have a tightly controlled industry driven by studios and agencies. And on the other side, there's this explosion of user-generated content online that's kind of crazy and wild and uncurated. What we want to do is bring these two worlds together. We want to create an entirely new process for production by enabling companies to produce high-impact video at scale by engaging their own communities of fans, customers, and employees to become the filmers. This is a really important point. We're not building a scenic community. Instead, we're building the tools to enable our clients to engage and create with their own communities. So meet Dave. Dave's our CTO. Um, before joining us, Dave was the chief architect at Pixolve. He's going to help run us through the demo. So the BBC are one of our subscription clients. They logged into their studio because they wanted to create more content around the Great North Run. So they set up a project. They set a project ID. And then they loaded filming instruction that they wanted their community to capture. They then invited a select number of people to join the project who were running in the race. Now, from the user's side, they downloaded the, the app, joined the project, and then they could see the filming instructions that the BBC had already loaded in. The script means that the BBC actually received the content they need. They could check out a feed to see what other people in the community had captured, select a shot, film, and upload. Because of the terms and conditions in the app, all the video that's uploaded can then be used by the BBC, whether it's online or even in the broadcast shows. All of the video is then automatically tagged, analyzed, and processed on upload as well. Then there's three ways to edit. Either we have our online edit tools, so you can drag and drop your favorite videos. Or you can select your favorite videos and put them into your own editing programs. Or we have a network of freelance editors who can log into your studio remotely and help you create the video you need. Within a few days, the BBC had received 240 videos from 39 different people from 36 countries around the world. Originally, they were only going to put 60 seconds into the broadcast show, but the quality and the engagement of the content was so high, they actually replaced six minutes of the broadcast with content from the CNET platform. Here's a quick 30 seconds so you can get a feel of what it was like on air. Oh, is there sound? Any sound? No sound. I actually know it so well, I could probably just speak it. Do the voices. Yeah, shall I do <laughs> the mimic it, Dave? <laughs> Are we able to pause the time, or should I just keep going? Get the clock reset. OK, thank you. Sorry, guys. It's the demo effect. <laughs> it's a proper drum roll now, isn't it? Like, what's the video going to be? <laughs> cool. Thank you. It really is the world's favorite run. And you'll hear plenty of voices throughout the morning from those countries. So here's a little taste of what's to come. I've always wanted to do the Great North Run from when I was small. I used to watch it at home on TV with my dad. And on a summer's evening like this, who wouldn't want to be running? It's lovely, free, and get clear your mind of the hard day's work. I love the feeling of being free when I'm out running. So we're also working with BT Sport and NBC Universal, pulling in fans into their broadcast shows and changing what they create. We're working with retailers around the world, Body Shop, Benefit, Look Fantastic, 
leveraging their own employees to do makeup tutorials, product reviews. And actually, the content we're doing at the Body Shop is the best performing video online because it's real and it connects. We're working with some of the biggest organizations in the world already, connecting their employees from countries at a global scale to humanize their scale and bring their voices out at the front. Since founding the platform, or since actually in the last year, we've received over double the amount of video into the platform. But more importantly, we've seen a five and a half times increase in footage download. This means our clients are doing more with the content, working more efficiently, and are more engaged with the platform. Since founding the company in 2014, we've worked with over 100 clients today. Initially, we started off as a pay-as-you-go, but now we're fully into a subscription model. Our revenue this year will be seven figures on a six-figure MRR. Going forward, we are so excited now to scale and to automate the product further. This is why we're now leveraging all of the content and the data that we're collecting to invest in machine learning. Today, I am so excited to announce that we're coming out of beta in our content search tools. So you can now search sentiment analysis, object recognition, and transcription. Please come and see us in the demo so you can have a look, and of course, we'll make you be part of the Dis Disrupt video. This is one of the most exciting things happening in video today, changing the way that our clients are thinking about how they might produce their next video and how they can create the biggest impact by leveraging the communities that they already train who are the most passionate about their brand today. Thank you. Judges, what do you think? So, uh, Actually, I invested in a company that's somewhat uh, similar to this. It actually got sold to News Corporation a few years ago, uh, Storyful. Yeah. You're familiar with them? Yeah. I know that they're more geared towards gathering content from submitters in news stories all mm -hmm. over the world, uh, and they're used by a lot of different news agencies. What, what's the, how would you characterize the, you know, the content submitters and the community of content uh, that, that you're submitting versus a, a platform like Storyful? Um, I think, do you mean by the communities you're creating with? And how is it different? different yeah, from, from say, like, yeah, from Storyful. How, how would you compare yourself to Storyful and the, the audiences that they would have? So I think with Storyful, um, they, they can gather and work with news organizations. So if something happens in the world, they can collect that video and distribute it. We're quite different in that we're not reactive in that way. We don't um, aggregate any content, and we're not trying to get seen it downloaded by millions of people. The metric for us is that our clients are creating with the right people for them, so they actually invite the people they want to create with, which is why employees or beauty experts is where we start. And then in terms of the distribution side, it can go onto their social platforms um, or their internal communication platforms. Mm -hmm. So really, your unique angle is around the tools that you offer people to A, collect the videos, and B, edit the videos. Is that accurate, or? Yeah, so direct, collect, and curate. Um, that's, that's where we sit. Got it. At, at the moment, you guys are focused quite a lot on um, B2B and kind of behind the scenes mm -hmm. videos of, of corporates. But the big kind of value in the space, to me, feels like it's the advertising world. And mm -hmm. can you see yourselves being the platform to create the most authentic new adverts in the future? Yeah, 100%. And we do do a lot with the employees. So there's nothing to say that the employees wouldn't be in the adverts at the front of the, the show. Um, and that's what we're doing so much. We work a lot in, the, in marketing and retail at the moment doing exactly that. What do the creators themselves get out of it? Like, what platform can, or what, uh, momentum from the platform can they take forward if they decide, hey, I loved being on TV in this little <laughs> segment, you know, what can they offer themselves to other people who, you know, use your platform tools or can they carry their audience forward, that kind of thing? Um, so in terms of kind of what's in it for them, from a, war a reward side, sometimes our clients then can give sort of product VIP access as a thank you and credit them. Um, in terms of kind of joining other projects, it would be the brand advertising out. So we don't share the crowd. The reason that we don't do that is because companies are super excited to create their own communities. And if we work with BBC Earth, who we do, and then we're like, here, Nat Geo, um, I think that would cause some friction. So that's actually a USP that we've got. Um, and then from the consumer side, they're championed by the brand that they really love and rewarded for it. When you pitch your solution against others to clients, do you give them a sense of how, how much better value or 
uh, less expensive it is to create a solution with your platform versus sending out Pima cameras and, and what is that figure? Absolutely. So, uh, so I can give you a couple of examples of that. So we work with a client at the moment called Rolls-Royce. You'll know them very well. Um, they've been using us now for probably about nine months. And on average, if you look across the entire use of that platform, they're producing about a video a day. Um, so our revenue model doesn't try to restrict the amount of content that you want to produce from that community or the size of the community. We're trying to enable you to, to create as much content as you possibly can. Where we scale is we try and scale according to the number of productions that you want to run or where you sit within the organization. So to give an example of that, we have a financial services client at the moment. Um, they started using us for a television channel that they wanted to promote internally across their quarter of a million employees around the world. From that one engagement, they had other teams approach them to say, you now have an existing base of uh, contributors of video uh, across the world who could contribute to other components of what we're trying to do as an organization, whether that's communicating externally, for example, through graduate recruitment programs and so on, or whether just internally to capture knowledge and share knowledge between teams around the world. So very quickly, we've scaled from a singular use case within a global organization across multiple teams, and that particular client led to a four times increase in the, the average contract value. And how much would it have cost the BBC to create that clip if they weren't using CNET? Um, I think to have flown a cam <coughs> camera crew, actually it would have had to have been 36 camera crews around to 36 countries because they've had to film it within a few days of their training. Um, hundreds of thousands of pounds. And also we had some really cute moments where they like position the camera and like ran past it. So you just get this emotion that you wouldn't get even if a camera crew did go. So content creation is a big problem for people and you're just having the users generate all the content in a video format. It's, it seems like a real good value proposition for a lot of your customers. What are they paying f for your service, uh, you know, per customer, per channel, for whatever, uh, per month? Absolutely. So, so uh, we structure ourselves as a SaaS platform on a 12-month or longer subscription basis and our starting price is £5,000 a month. Uh, and we scale up, as, as I was saying, uh, on that, on the basis of the number of productions you want to run or the number of teams within the organization who want to activate their own communities and then uh, create content off the back of it. Um, what we've seen through our sales cycle this year is that if you start with a, a, a one-month pilot, which is how we used to run, mm. um, the conversion from those pilots was not as successful as we wanted to see. And so we actually completely retrained the way that we think about our sales process. So we now only go to market with a minimum of a three-month engagement. That engagement is a paid-for engagement. It gives us the opportunity to properly train and ensure that the client is fully comfortable with the way the platform works. And it allows the client to really understand how to produce content in this new way across the platform. And at the end of that process, it's then a very simple yes or no. Do I want to continue with a 12-month subscription or am I happy to leave it there? Um, we kick that uh, new initiative off in the summer. Uh, we have 10 active clients on that basis right now. And of the first five that have now come to the end of that, four successfully transitioned into a 12-month contract. Mm -hmm. Does it also have to do with the fact that some people just need this for a couple of projects? So I think the clients that we're targeting to sell to, we want to work with retailers, broadcasters, and large organizations, which the reason that we've done that is because yeah. there is an ongoing need. Um, but it's also when we first started, we did run campaigns and do one-off projects. But when you've got the community there, I think back to your community point, they might not create with another brand, but they do keep creating with that brand. So actually, once you've got them there, the, the kind of real value is to keep working with them ongoing. How many customers have you lost so far? So if you look at the course of this yeah. year, um, we started the year with 12 subscription clients. We've lost one of those clients. Um, the main reason for that is that uh, when we started the business, of course, the product evolves, our value proposition evolves. And so some of the early customers who came on were sold on a product that was serving a slightly different need and were fundamentally sold on a very different pricing structure. Um, so we took the tough decision to say, look, you know, we have clients who are queuing up at the door right now at a level that we want to see. Do we continue to support and nurture those clients who are finding it difficult to adapt to where we would like to take the business? Wherever possible, we would always try and support um, some of our clients in that way, but sometimes it's just not possible. Um, so we've lost one of those clients. This how, how big of a business do you think you can be and, uh, and what do you think is an exit opportunity for, for the firm? 
So uh, if you look at the market today, uh, you look at sources such as Walk or Gartner, places like that, they're pointing to a market in the UK alone of £15 billion spent annually on content production for marketing purposes. Now you look at a business like CNIT, we're tapping into that market as our route to market, but once you're embedded within an organization, you are starting to touch on areas such as knowledge sharing, recruitment, HR, many different facets of the organization that start to broaden the market potential. And we're just talking about the UK. Um, we have a couple of inbound interests from the US, which we've responded to, and we have active clients there today. Part of our journey for 2017 is to get out there and to start to push outbound and see if we can actually put people on the ground to engage in that market. So we think from that point, we have the opportunity to scale uh, quite significantly. You asked the question then also about exit. I think that there are two different ways in which you can think about the exit. And it partly depends on how we see the rest of the market forces evolving. Um, the first is you look at the classic production content community. That is agencies, large independent production firms and so on. Um, who increasingly, as the market evolves, are going to want to bring this capability in as part of what they're already doing, and that's a clear exit opportunity for us. But alongside that, potentially, you'll be looking at the, the technology providers, the Adobe's and so on, who want to bring a toolkit such as this in alongside what they already sell in the traditional production, professional production capacity. So I think both of those routes could become a, a potential for us. I think also, just completely agree, and then to add to that, I mean, the exit potential, I think the content landscape is changing so rapidly, it's moving so fast. In a year's time, it might be a company that we aren't even thinking of now. Um, and that is really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. How do you stop yourselves becoming an agency as you get bigger clients, you want more things from you, you want more service? Absolutely. So uh, that's a very good question. So we have, and, and it's, it's, it's right to say today, we have some clients who take the product and run with it. And they're very happy to use it. Uh, without really uh, talking to us at all. Actually, we're trying to get in touch with them to make sure they're happy and everything's going well, but you know, the, the figures in the platform show that it is. Um, we have some other clients who are um, less comfortable with this new realization that irrespective of what industry you are in, you are today, by definition, a media organization. You have customers, future employees, shareholders out there who uh, are watching your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, who are talking about you irrespective of whether you want to push content out there or not. Um, and so for those clients who are slowly building their capability, we felt it was important that we provided an element of production support to take them on that journey, to accelerate our ability to get into the market. Mm -hmm. But right now that sits as a standalone component within the business um, that we see as a self-fulfilling, self-generating entity. We feel that that's a temporary measure while those customers get to a point where they have their own media capability in-house. Okay. Most of your customers actually there are big brands with already established communities. There are not small brands looking to build communities. So they're looking for tools. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, just just uh, uh, when have you launched, uh, started the company? How um, many are you? I founded raised? it in January 2014. Okay. Um, we are 18 people now. Okay. How much do you raise? Um, raised around 900,000, a little bit less. Okay. Um, but we've generated well over that in, in revenue. Double over that, I think. Yeah, over double. Thanks. All right, one more round of applause for CNET. Thank you.